Michael coming at you. Um, I got an email from a person who is trying to help a young man, her and her husband, and wants to become closer to God, to Jesus, but yet is dealing with anger management issues as something appears to be pulling him away from wanting to go to the church and as a result things have been said to this person's friends that are trying to help him that have created hurt and pain so I created this video not only for this couple but to be used as a tool for those that are trying to help people that are under affliction so let's just start this off with prayer. So Lord Jesus, we want to come to you and um, we just want to ask you that these words may sink into our hearts and minds and be used as tools to help people that are under the strongholds of the enemy. And that way we always remember that we're not supposed to hate the person but the sin but that we may realize the power and the blood of Jesus Christ as we deliver these individuals from the strongholds of their lives and bring them into a new place of healing, which is in your body of the church. And we thank you in advance for these things. We pray these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is a big one. I mean, first of all, we have to realize that our entire existence on this planet is about the gospel. And spreading to the gospel to as many people as possible, that's it. Our whole existence is to realize that we are sons and daughters of God, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, to turn from the ways of this world to the ways of God as we're supposed to give ourselves in servitude to God to help the world. But we have to remember that we're living in a world of darkness, a world under the curse of sin, underneath the control of Satan and his demons. Everything you see in this world is a culmination of that very fact. Period. It's a great illusion, a great guise, what we see going on in the world. But at the end of the day, that's what this entire existence is about. Either God or Satan. So when we really look at our lives, we are all under strongholds. You know, many people that are searching for God search from outside of themselves. They think other people are going to help save them. By reading this book is going to save them. By becoming part of this group is going to save them. By watching this program is going to save them. By doing these works are going to save them. But yet, the only thing that's going to save us is ourselves and our faith in God. Everything we would ever want to have to live the life of our dreams is within this body. As we deal with the strongholds of our minds that are under the control of the flesh and sin, that's almost like an antenna that's receiving input from the darkness of this world to continue to be of this world, of the flesh of the ground. And taking that journey from your mind into your heart, because within your heart is where Jesus wants to live through the Holy Spirit. So everything we need to do is within ourselves. But we live in a society that we want the latest cars, we want the latest house, we want the latest clothes, we want the latest jobs. All these things that are just layers within our life that mask the hurt that we have inside. But yet not many of us want to go deep inside because we realize the deeper we go inside within our hearts to deal with this pain that we have suffered all of our lives because of this world of darkness that that's going to be difficult, but yet that's what we must do. Now, many people will have a hard time understanding this very concept, but that's where we need to come together in community to remind each other about the whole purpose of this world is our walk with Christ and the gospel, to use the Bible as tools to help deliver people, but to help people 
people start seeing things differently to break them out of the mindset of this world and through your faith and strength in God, show them a better way to live their lives. So when we're dealing with people with afflictions, first of all, we got to realize this person may freak out on a number of different extremes, very subtle outlashing or very severe physical violence or whatever it may be, whatever the affliction may be, anger, drugs, alcohol, sexual addictions, whatever the vice may be. But the way we deal with it is always the same. And the first thing we have to do as disciples, you and I, is we mustn't allow that person to trigger our emotions on our buttons. It's the first thing that happens. People trigger us, we react, and our pain bodies and their pain bodies start feeding off of each other. We can't have that happen. You need to go into prayer and ask the Lord through His precious blood to anoint you and to protect you and to put a hedge around you and that no matter what happens when you try to help this person, you won't get affected. That's number one. Number two, you got to start praying for that person. Prayer is, po- is very powerful, not only possible, but powerful. And when you pray through the blood of Jesus Christ to anoint that person's life, to lay hands on that person, slowly the devil will go away in his temptations. And more and more, that person's going to be receptive to what it is that you need to feed within them. But we mustn't come from anger when we're frustrated that these people aren't learning the lessons in their lives. We mustn't come from a position of judgment. But we got to realize that nothing's going to happen overnight and it's going to be the slow seeds that happen and gradually grow inside that become the people that we wish to see. Now, sometimes these people hurt us so bad that we want apologies. We're, we're giving them our homes, jobs, money, whatever it may be. But you know what? This person is asleep. That's the first thing you have to realize. He's asleep. She's asleep. She doesn't realize what she's doing. She's so, or he's so caught up in their pain that it's just running mad inside and they can't see clearly. They have so much running in their heads. It's almost like one extreme to the other. They're happy. They're sad. They're mad. They're angry, whatever. But they don't even realize what's going but the, on in their mind, but the great thing is, is you do, and you can help them, and you can guide them. It's almost like taking a person who's asleep and is a sleepwalker and gradually getting them back in bed, but in this case, we want to gradually wake them up. So in those moments of hostility, we've got to sit patiently, try to give love, just listen to that person, let them experience what they have to experience, but don't react. Just listen and let it dissipate. But when you have the opportunity to help that person in a much better time, perhaps, in this case with this lady, perhaps your husband should say, hey, let's go to lunch. And next thing you know, you go to a local church. Who cares if it's Catholic, Lutheran, Protestant? Just go into the church and sit there in the very presence of God. Though God is in the world, not necessarily in the church. Just sit there. Perhaps it's getting them literature, a little book on this or that. Perhaps it's going online. And go into ministries, there's something called the cleansing, I think it's the cleansing streams. There's ministries of deliverance that are out there that help people. There's a lot of information to help them. But you got to plant the seeds when they're in good conditions to help change their mind. And you need to be the reflection you wish to see within them. And you've got to have patience. And you got to get into community. You have to get into community. Don't worry about getting them into community. You need to go back into church and talk to your pastors or leaders and say, hey, I've got this problem and I need help. Because when we edify ourselves in the body of Christ, glorify God, and we present what's going on in our lives as hard as it may be, that's when the body can present solutions through prayers as we now all pray for these individuals that the strongholds of their lives may be removed. As we slowly deliver them, we do have the power to deliver them, but it's going to take time from the demons and the devil that's within his life. So have patience, prayer, take a step back, and look at it from a different perspective, like what would God do in this circumstance? And realize that this person's going to wig out, but eventually, if you do this the right way and get that person into community, not necessarily church with other believers, their lives will change. And this is a great first step as that first step starts with you and I and it comes through prayer. This is William Michael. I hope this helps. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace.